Hello, Marcy. How are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm very well. It's so good to see you today. Thank you for taking time to talk to me and virtually my students. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So they had asked some questions. They saw a whole bunch of your work, which some of which I've got kind of hanging out behind me here on my bookshelf. Um, they got to see a bunch of your different work on Wednesday's class, and they sent you a bunch of lovely questions, which you've already gotten to take a peek at, which is exciting. So um, the first question that they had is that they, they know your name and they know the name of your business, Moon's Creations. Can you tell us why you decided to make that your business name? My Chinese name is Moon Yen. So it's Moon's Creations. There you so. go. That's true. <laughs> it's, it's, it's my Chinese name. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, we, we had noticed that a, well, they were really excited to point out that some of the things were very much ingrained in Chinese culture. Like they loved seeing like your year of the boar um, creatures and they just, they loved seeing all the different things. They really liked the boars a lot because that boar oh, was so cute. Thank you. Um, you're very welcome. Um, and you make a style of creature. Wait, I'm going to use this toad because I'm incredibly biased with toads and he's just he's just fun to hold around um called amigurumi um how would you describe what that is and is there a difference between what amigurumi is and knitting and crocheting amigurumi can be knitted or crocheted in fact oh. um traditionally they are crocheted uh amigurumi just means to make out of yarn okay so <laughs> is there a way because I don't know a lot about yarn so I'm really excited to learn a lot about these things and so are my students but how would you describe if there is a difference what is the difference between knitting and crocheting knitting is two needles crocheting is one. Oh. so if you ever see somebody with two needles it's yeah. knitting but if they just have one hook a needle oh. it's a crochet so if someone's going clack 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 that's right. knitting they're knitting. Very good. Um, I don't know why I keep looking at the toad like like I'm answering like we're answering <laughs> specifically, but you know it's just I, I need to put this down for a moment. There we go. There we go. Uh, so thank you very much. Now I know the difference. I love it. So there we go. Um, the next question is: Is that you're the first fiber artist we've talked to, which is both very cool and also kind of a crime because fiber arts are amazing. What got you into this style of Knitting. I was okay. broke. <laughs> okay, there we go. I mean, that's a great motivator <laughs> in and of itself. Um, that we were living in my sister's uh, basement because my husband had lost his job. And so we had a one room bedroom that was our whole life, and I needed Christmas presents. And so I made everybody Christmas presents by crocheting them. And then I was like, now I want to make more. And then I had a bunch. And then I was like, what am I going to do with all these little bunnies? So I started selling them online. I'm not really good at planning. <laughs> it, it, it's worked out so far. I mean, I have a million of these things from you uh, over our like, I think, I think we determined before we started recording um, that we've known each other for potentially like 12 years, which is, which seems so strange. Um, now, you, you started doing this thing, but how did you learn how to do this? Well, originally when I'd heard amigurumi, I thought it was similar to origami, where I don't know why I got them mixed up, I'm stupid. Japanese? And so I was like, oh, so it's made with just one piece of yarn the whole way through, that is amazing. I wanna do that. And so I got some patterns of like, this is not all one yarn. I have to sew things together and this sticks. So I had bought patterns and I knew how to crochet a little bit from my mom. And then I found out I didn't know how to crochet after making them for a couple of years. <laughs> so that's why there's a style change is because I didn't know what I was doing. And then I figured out maybe eight years into my business <laughs> that I was doing it wrong. Oh, so. wow. That's a long time to sort of discuss that. <laughs> I mean, I, we were looking at your work and this is true of all artists, but you know, art is meant to change over time. And I was, I was looking at some of the stuff that I have and I was looking at some of the newer things you made and so much has changed. I mean, and I don't have a great grasp of, of how you're actually creating them out of yarn, but like just the simple things like on the little Star Trek ones, you know, you use a lot bigger eyes now and the costuming is a little bit different and more detailed. And like, I love these guys, but 
it was really cool to see how they had changed over time. And I, I and I love them, my little my little pals. Sit over there, Spock. <laughs> <laughs> One of them's taking a nap. Um, just tired. But that's really interesting. I love it. Um, now, because you had just said that you have been sort of learning along the way, how, what do you do if you have find that you've made a mistake? Like, do you have to start over or what does that look like when you're working with yarn? It depends. I mean, with, with a lot of times, what's nice about yarn is I can just pull it apart. Okay. As long as I don't cut the yarn, it, mm -hmm. I can just pull apart the whole doll from beginning to end because my dolls are usually made like with this guy. So his whole body is all one piece of yarn. Really? His arms and legs are different, but his body is just one okay. piece. Yeah, so yeah. I could rip out his bottom and he would all come unwound. Poor fella. But um, yeah, so as long as I mess up on that portion, it's no big deal. If it's an arm or leg, I'll probably toss it. I mean, there's been so many times where I've like lost ears and arms because I've just mistakenly placed them weird places. Aww. So, I mean, that, that stuff like that happens all the time, but usually with yarn, that's why I like yarn versus like sewing, because I always end up with like tiny little snippets of fabric that I've just ruined. Aww. But with yarn, it's forgiving. <laughs> I had a question that we actually did not have on our list, so hopefully this will be something you'll be able to answer. When you have a mistake like that, I've seen some people in the past actually use their mistakes to actually be the stuffing for these guys. Do you ever take... I guess discarded ones you can't use and recycle them for no guts. <laughs> no, no. Okay. I throw them away. I mean, it seems a little, a little, a little bit disturbing. Like there's mistakes inside his tummy. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, that makes sense. I guess. But yeah, again, I'm looking it's at it. It's not very environmental. I, I, sh I should do that. But I would, I honestly, I would worry that it would cause them to have like a weird lump in them. Oh yeah. That would cause people to kind of work the lump because that you know that. The fabric actually has tiny holes in it. That's true. So it would be possible if somebody was like, oh, well, let me keep working this thing in round and it would pop out eventually. And then you'd have a creepy mistake be be sticking be out of their head. You just <laughs> loved, it. loved it to death, quite literally. Goodness, <laughs> Goodness me. Okay, stay there, please. Um, another question, actually, as I have this guy, when I look at this guy, he's, he's very, he's very, uh, very cute he's got blushing little cheeks now is this something that you do with the yarn or is this something that you paint on that is actually um chalk pastel <gasps> oh my goodness which is my ultimate secret <gasps> yeah now I everyone used... knows i know now everyone knows it's chalk pastel everyone i Yay! don't use no blush i don't use marker or fabric paints it's chalk <laughs> Great. well teachers love chalk or at least old-timey teachers did i guess it doesn't really fly anymore um, I don't think because you can kind of work it in to the fabric and it kind of stains it more. Oh. I don't know. It, it works better for me than a lot of the other things. I, I imagine it blends really well, um, as chalk pastels do. Um, another question that they have asked is what kind of yarn do you use? Are you using things from like actual sheep or are you using sort of the more synthetic stuff that you would get in an art store? I do use cheap synthetic, and the reason being that they it holds its shape more plasticky. Than the other ones would. Sorry, they all got tags on them from the last show I did, which way was back so, when, <laughs> way back when, a whole year ago. Um, so, sorry, because I'm ripping them out. <laughs> so violent. Um, they're just the plastic tags. So what it does is it holds them tighter. The okay. ones that are, if I make them out of a, a wool fabric, they will. It's softer, and they kind of will fall over. Yeah. Especially the ones that don't have arms and legs. Again, sorry, oh. snatching things out, but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so with like the plasticky forms you could actually push in their little bummies and they'll sit up okay but if you have one that's made out of wool it won't it'll just it'll keep getting soft and fall over interesting. Interesting. so while more environmentally efficient it's not when you're trying to keep them from falling over yeah they need to have good balance see i would have i would have assumed that it would have been the other way around but the kind of sheep that i raised as as a kid were like really like wiry like rough wool and then like you couldn't move that stuff they were not like pet me sheep they were like oh this is like touching a carpet um <laughs> it's like oh you're you're real friendly there buddy um so you have to make patterns to make these creatures yes. what does one of those look like 
I have them. Oh, this is my pattern for a Dalek. <laughs> oh, and for those of my students who don't know what a Dalek is, it's an angry trash can from a bad sci-fi show. So like I'll draw a little picture sometimes in my pattern book and then I'll write random little notes to myself to remember. Okay. But I don't, sorry, I know it's so tiny. No, I'm kind of looking at it. So now this is something I don't know much about, but it looks like you're counting the number of stitches for mm -hmm. different parts of it. So like, would you have different rows of stitching for like the black parts and the gray parts and the blue yeah. parts? Okay. And it's all math. It's all based on sixes. So if you know multiplication by sixes, it all works out. Do your math. No. That's not <laughs> <laughs> See, I knew that it involved some math and I was trying to explain to the best of my incredibly limited ability to students like, well, this involves math and art and they are BFFs, but I really don't know much more than that. But that's really cool. And actually, as I look at this, two, six, four, five, six, and then it goes to another color. I don't know if that's done intentionally or not, but I love it. I, I don't know if that one is so much as well. It's mostly the increases, like so every okay. so many stitches I'll put an increase in. So if I start with a base of six in a circle, then I'll increase it by two. So then it'd be 12 stitches. Then it would be 18, 24, 30, 36, 42, and just keep increasing in that way until you have a big boy. Big boy. Hello, that's a really <laughs> awesome one. Actually, now this is skipping ahead a bit, but one of the questions that my students had is what's the biggest thing that you've made? Well, I made one of these ones, but I made him with like really big yarn, like super fat. And so he was like, he, he was a big, big boy. And I actually sold him, but he had a like jingle in his head and our squeaky in him. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I guess this also answers this question, but have you ever, and this is, this would either be really cuddly or actually a little bit terrifying, but have you, have you ever made anything that is the same size as you? No, because I have issues with paying attention to stuff and I get bored so right. like I have a giant bunny head and I've had that giant bunny head for uh 10 years because <laughs> I'm bored with it and I don't want to deal with it anymore I, mean, I think just like a sort of bunny head by itself would be kind of cool <laughs> if it takes too long I don't want to do it and uh, yeah I mean I, I can't do anything that takes too long I, that's that's how I do a lot of my art too. If I if it takes more than like a day or two, I, it's it's done forever for me. It's just yeah, cannot be bothered with it. Um, so what do you make sort of additions of things out of? Because one of the things that they love seeing, and I've got a couple examples here. Sorry, Toad. Uh, come here. Oh, he just oh he landed in my water. A true <laughs> frog. I have a mug of. For those of you who can't see, I have a mug of water on the ground. The toad has rolled off of the bookshelf bounced on the carpet and into the mug. <laughs> He'll be okay. Just squeeze him out and put him in the sunshine. <laughs> Good thing it's not real wool. Um, okay, so these, I guess it is, you stay there. Uh, I think this is actually the only one I have with me downstairs that has the sort of additional hair on it. But what are you styling this part of these creatures out of? Oh wait, that's yarn. Is it? So what I'll, yeah, what I'll do is I will, like this guy, I don't know if you can see him. So I root, the yarn in there okay and then I take a it looks like a cat brush mm -hmm. you know with the, the wires and I'll brush it all out and then I will take a flat iron and flat iron it out ah! so that it makes it smooth and not all kinky and then I will in his are actually individual pin curls so I coated well, each that was my next question because he's got some curly hair yeah I coated each one with fabric glue and then curled it around and then pinned it with a, a straight pin until it kept it in that shape. I love it. That's really cool. <laughs> so, because I used to do like big 50s style hair, so I know how to do like pin curls and whatnot. And so I. That's I really interesting. That's a lot of work too to make that happen. They loved the texture that they saw on, they saw that, that probably that exact same sort of pony um, oh. on your on your um, Padlet where they were asking the questions. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just pulling out the plastic every hangers. Time, every time I feel like I need to cover their tiny eyes. <laughs> no, no, it's not hurting them at all. <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's like the, the plastic things you find in your clothes. That's all. Good. <laughs> um, the next question that kind of goes along with this of the sort of additional things that you add to these, um, you're making little clothes and things for them. Um, mm -hmm. This one looks like it's made out of felt, but is that mostly yep. what we use? Yeah, because felt is cheap and forgiving. 
<laughs> so, and usually I don't do patterns. I just kind of cut it as is, okay. which is my downfall. Cause then people are like, can you remake this? I'm like, please don't make me. <laughs> I don't know what they I are did. All one of a kind. I remember this was the only one of this that you made and I was very lucky to adopt it. <laughs> and for those of you at home, this is a, this is a character from that same show that I love Dr. Who. There, this is a character that has a very specific, colorful costume. And this little cat brooch. I tried to cut the cat brooch out of felt and they fell apart. It felt apart? It's too tiny. <laughs> it felt the apart. felt was too tiny. It just ended up being fibers. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I feel so. Uh, but I, I think the paint worked out really well. <laughs> I recognized it because I'm a big nerd. Um, <laughs> there you go. Um, let's see. What other questions did people have? Um, dun, 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 dun. Okay, these are questions that my students have on specific things. Have you made them in the past? So it's a bit of like a rapid fire kind of question. Have you ever made a bee? Yes, I used to make little tiny bees. I had regular bees and zombies. That's right. That's right. I remember <laughs> those. Foolish, Miss Wells. You know what? I couldn't find a picture of them. That's probably, I didn't see a picture That's, of them on your Instagram. I stopped making them because people kept ripping off the design. So I was like, whatever, do your own thing. <laughs> it's like me and the soot sprites. I found one on TikTok the other day. I was like, oh. <laughs> hmm. Y'all suck. <laughs> All right. Um, have you ever made, now this is something we talked about in class on Wednesday, uh, a purple googly-eyed octopus. Never googly eyes because all of my eyes are what are called safety eyes and I forgot to snatch one up for you to show you. We had but a picture it, of them. We had a picture of them. They're, they're little plastic. Yeah, so they got the shank in them. Yeah, all of mine have the, the um, safety eyes because I don't want people to rip out their eyeballs. So the googly I mean, eyes. It's, it's a fair thing to not want people to do. Yeah, but the, sometimes a lot of times people want to give them to babies. I don't know why. And so I'm like, eee. so if they put googly eyes, they, they eat the eyeball off. I mean, not the babies are scary. They go after, they go after the, the vulnerable parts. No, they don't. Babies are wonderful. Um, but, okay, uh, interesting. Um, we, we, had, we had looked at that octopus that they had discovered uh, about four years ago by accident. It was this ridiculous looking purple octopus that had these like big comical eyes and <laughs> scientists just proceeded to just laugh at it as they discovered this new creature. I'll show it to you when we're done our recording. But um, someone had asked if you had ever made one of those. He's standing up really well. Hey. Good job. Um, have you ever made things from Naruto? No. Okay. Only because I've never seen Naruto. Okay. Yeah, they, they saw your Pokemon. <laughs> I know we see a little friend. They saw your little baby Yodas. Um, have you done any sort of anime like characters other than the Pokemon? I think so. I mean, I'm pretty sure I have. Oh. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know my brain's got drawing a blank because my child is creeping into here. Um, <laughs> I, I know I have because we used to do anime cons. So um, I don't know of any of them offhand. They wanted me to always do Sailor Moon. And I'm like, I don't really like Sailor like Moon. The costuming on those things would be really complicated to do. It, yeah, it's the dresses. Yeah. But bunnies don't have waists. <laughs> oh, and we, now now we had seen they they loved seeing your pennywise bunny and we had noticed mm -hmm. some of the frills in that and we were wondering now are you just folding the felt to make it do those sort of uh -huh. like things yeah I, I just um so if i have a, a needle it goes you know just kind of up down up down up down like you're doing a running stitch and then just pull it tight and it makes a ruffle oh nice that's way easier than i thought it would be oh yeah <laughs> Mine's always easy. <laughs> I don't right. like working hard. <laughs> the last thing that um they'd asked if you had made is do you ever make little voodoo dolls? Because one of my students collects like these little sort of crocheted little voodoo dolls that I, I remember seeing in stores way back when. They're very cute. I, I did one bunny voodoo doll for like Halloween. Okay, that makes Same sense. With little pins, like big hat pin pins. <laughs> yeah, that's the only one I've ever done. Okay. Very cool. Your sister. What <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you're playing okay. Animal Crossing and she needs help. <laughs> oh yeah, you know it's it's difficult. You gotta you gotta sell those uh, turnips or whatever they're making today. Um, <laughs> what is your favorite thing that you think that you've made? I made a moon, and it was a, a hot air balloon with a little like steampunk bunny on the bottom of it. 
And it was so cool. And I'm so forever mad at myself for never taking a photo. I was going to say, I've never seen this. Yeah, I, I sent it to, it was at some museum or something. It was really? an exhibit. Mama, she didn't need my help. She said that I mean, Minecraft has a ghost on her. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mind? We're recording for work, sweetheart. <laughs> we love you. <laughs> um, Sorry. That's okay. I told uh, them to go away. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I mean, I, I work with I work with kids all day. I get it. Um, the other thing that I wanted to ask, which I completely lost it. Oh, um, have any of your creations ever made their way into any sort of prop in a film or TV or anything like that? If so, no one's ever told me. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> A couple people that they've seen in the past have had like like brief cameos in movies and things and they always want to ask that with people because you know grown-ups are really cool and they can make cool things that sometimes show up in movies i did i, I know i shipped to um oh gosh who are the people who do wallace and gromit um oh man um ardman studios i don't yeah somebody who worked in ardman ordered a bunch of things once but i've never seen anything from it so i don't i don't know Very cool. <laughs> i did tell them that i took this this one particular doll like to the to the batman movie set because i was playing with it just <laughs> while we were in between takes so there's a potential that that's in a batman movie for half of the <laughs> this big this big in the background as i get violently destroyed by bane um <laughs> rest rest in pieces little dalek and Mr. uh so you we saw such a huge variety of things that you make um what how do you come up with the ideas of things you're going to make? Because you've got so many different things that you've done. Like, how do you pick and choose what you want to create? Lately, since I have children, I don't. I don't think of anything. My brain is gone. Um, it used to be just whatever would entertain me. And I, like, I would honestly watch TV all the time. And so I would just be like, oh, I'm going to make this. I'm going to make this off of this show. And I feel like this and, you know, whatever. But lately... And with the pandemic. Oh God. yeah. Yeah. The creative I can't be creative for anything. Yeah. I just cry over not being able to create. Oh, oh. I think I really burnt myself out. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're we're all feeling it. All the creative types are 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 struggling these days. Um hopefully coming to an end to that. Best hopes available. Um is doing when now when there when there are shows when our things are working in a not bonkers year that we have experienced the past approaching year um was this the only sort of artwork that you did or did you do any other kind of artwork as well this is it okay this is my my my, my comfort since the pandemic i have made a a lovely crocheted blanket and three sweaters <laughs> so very cozy, <laughs> very cozy. <laughs> I have made things. I just, I don't know what to make anymore. Mm, yeah. It, it, usually I, I really like cryptids. So I like doing things like that. Ooh. I know I love cryptids. You know, and so any yokai, I'm like, oh, yokai. Very cool. Yeah. I, I look forward to seeing those when and if those, those, those appear uh, in the internet, you know, when, when, when we're feeling a little, a little better overall. Um, I think I'm taking a look at my list of questions from students. I think we've gone over everything. Do you have any sort of advice or recommendations to give to my lovely middle school students who are sort of learning so much about different kinds of artwork at this age? Um, any advice to give them if they're interested in doing fiber arts? Don't let anybody tell you what to do. If you're doing it wrong, it doesn't matter because you can make a whole business for several years and no okay. one will tell you you're doing it wrong. Look at my gallery of mistakes from Marcy Bridges, talented Indeed. artist. Indeed. I mean, the best part about crochet is that, I mean, you can literally jam that crochet hook anywhere in the fabric and do something new and unique. So there's no reason to like listen to like, oh, well, you're not supposed to do it that way. That's not proper. Well, that's not how you create new things. So. That's true. Do it. <laughs> it's fun. Don't be afraid to take risks. And if you don't do it correctly and it still works out in the end, then you're probably doing better than most. Yeah. I mean, just don't let things like that hold you back. Yeah. Have fun. 
And if it takes longer than an hour, put it down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I love it. Marcy, it's been so good to catch up with you. It's been so much fun to, to introduce my students to fiber arts and these wonderful little creatures, half of which are just falling down because I've placed them on a shelf that they don't like, except for this one. This one's very well behaved. Um, it's been so great to see these things up close. They got to see them up close in class. Those are my students who were in the building. Um, we got to see so many beautiful photographs that you took and it's been so great to learn a little about this art that is something that's new to me and new to them. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. You're very welcome. Um, I'm going to stop recording so we can say proper goodbyes because um, I have to go get a haircut very soon. <laughs> um, my hair is going to look a little bit like yours with this gorgeous purple because my students have asked me to do purple this time around. So. I have blue underneath, but it's very I thought fake. I saw that. It looks awesome. Yeah. Look at I you like rocking your cool colors. Love it. It's I'm never going back. <laughs> I mean, it, it suits you very well. I think, I think this is the first time I've seen your purple hair. Um, so it looks very, very nice. Now I know, now I have a little bit of an expectation as to what to tell the people to do when I, <laughs> when I go out into the world for the first time in forever. That's not work. So, <laughs> all right. Well, here's hoping that when the world gets safer, I get to see you soon. Um, and thanks again for talking to us. Thank you. Stop recording.